during the events of the Alien novel Out of the Shadows, we follow Ellen Ripley fresh out of the Narcissus in the year 2159, emerging early due to interference from the android Ash, who had managed to download himself into the ship's computer. The two are picked up by a ship called the Marion in orbit aboard the planet LV-178. To know the full story of this, go and watch my full history of LV-178 video. But today, we will be exploring a very specific couple of sections of the novel uh, uh, Out of the Shadows and of Sea of Sorrows that regard an ancient alien race that had previously colonised LV-178. What and who were they? And what led to their end? and their disappearance from the galaxy. During the events of the novel Out of the Shadows, we follow Ellen Ripley and the crew of the Marion as they try to survive a xenomorph infestation of their ship that is parked in orbit around LV-178. Together, Ripley and the survivors decide that the Narcissus life pod that Ellen Ripley had arrived on is their only hope of escaping, and though it may take years, they might still have a chance at survival. But first the fuel cells would have to be recharged, and the only cells in light years were located in the mines on the surface of LV-178. They eventually decided to use the Samson transport to travel to the surface to retrieve the fuel from the mines. Once on the planet, the survivors enter the mines and eventually their elevator malfunctions and plummets to the lower levels of the mine, the place the xenomorphs were initially encountered. Once reaching the bottom, the elevator suffers massive damage, making it useless, forcing them to move through the mines on foot. The group eventually encounter the xenomorph's source, which was a derelict vessel. Even more, the crew discovered the remains of a strange organism. This creature is described with some rather interesting details. It is compared by one of the crew to have semi-dog-like skeletal appearance, specifically relating to its head structure. These creatures are also described to be quadrupedal, with two additional limbs that are used uh, as presumably as arms, as these limbs are raised from the main portion of the body structure, with a head that is comparable to a jackal-like head of the ancient Egyptian god Anubis. These creatures would eventually come to be known as the Drukati. The creatures were estimated to be at least around 12 feet in length and very physically powerful. While we know very little about the Drukati as a species, we do actually know slightly more about their technological advancements. As stated, previously when the survivors of the Marion explored the extensive and deep tunnels of LV-178, they eventually came across the creature's remains along with a derelict spacecraft. The craft is actually said to be of a biomechanical nature. Now the first thing for us alien fans uh, that we would draw from this statement is that it is some kind of engineer or space jockey vessel, which begs the question, could the Drukati be the fabled space jockey species that we are somehow that were somehow involved with the xenomorph and engineers. This is hard to discern as the creature's appearance would seem to suggest otherwise. However, again, we have only seen the fossilized remains of a space jockey pilot merged with his ship on LV-426, and the Drukati could have actually been the actual body inside that uh, fossilized uh, possible suit. However. The problem is that Ellen Ripley is there. She had seen the derelict from LV-46 to board the Nostromo and notes that the Drukati ship, while biomechanical in nature, did appear to be of a completely different design to the space jockey's dreadnought vessel design. The thing I think the novel is trying to suggest is that it is possible that there were multiple species in the alien universe living in the Milky Way that saw biotech as the answer to a lot of technological problems or halts in advancements. Aside from that, the Ducati ship was said to be much larger and possessed a large wing-like object protruding from the ship's main hull. The Ducati ship, ship's architecture was much sleeker than most others that we have seen in the Alien universe, and it was suggested that a ship of this nature may have even been grown rather than constructed. With this, the planet of LV-178 appeared to be the Drukati's home world, 
As not far from the underground crash ship was an ancient, advanced and semi-preserved buried city. The city was very expansive and a true scale could not be determined. However, it was suggested by scientists who came to study it much later in the year 2096 uh, after it was discovered that it may have even encompassed most of the planet at one point. The city and tunnels that led around its interior had the appearance to be formed from some type of organic silica and a biotechnological structure. So basically we know that they are masters of biotechnology, which actually could be because they were in possession of xenomorph specimens, meaning that it's quite possible that the Drakati learned how to construct ships and cities of biological design through intense study of the xenomorph's biology. This is hinted to by the fact that aboard the derelict, the Drakati ship, um, there appears to be a nursery or a breeding or habitation system constructed specifically for the xenomorph. And we find further evidence of this within their cities itself, which seems to suggest that they at least had some kind of connection with the species. To what extent though, and to what nature, is currently unknown. Little of anything is actually known about the Drakati's history, and though we do get a few facts about who they were from what remains of their civilization, it isn't enough to answer even the most basic questions I have about their species. We, at the very least, know that LV-178 was either their homeworld or possibly one of their worlds spread across their intergalactic civilization. They may have at one time had an expansive empire that spread out to control the Milky Way. However, those times are in the past now. We know that at some point they came across, discovered, or even possibly engineered the Xenomorph species. Whatever of the possible options, it's likely that the Xenomorph was a large influence on not only their technology, but also their culture as we see nearly every aspect of their remnants being at least some part biotechnologically inspired or derived. There are some instances in the Predator universe where the Yaucha species make reference to the Drukati as being a powerful and fearsome player in the galactic stage, holding dominance over much of space until their mysterious disappearance. Now while there are a couple of ways their disappearance could have happened, I think there are a few important and likely ones to mention. First is simply that their dangerous practice of cultivating the Xenomorph may have led them to succumbing to a massive outbreak of the creatures that eventually led to their extinction. The second option is that they may have been at war with another faction throughout the galaxy. Notably, they may have been in conflict with the engineers at some point in a war that could have seen both sides decimated and eventually the near complete obliteration of both parties involved, which could have been why we saw little to no engineers or Drakati presence in the alien timeline in the Milky Way. The last option is simple. The Drakati may have eventually outgrown their stay in the galaxy and crossed over to the next to continue their species growth. But which one of these theories fits the narrative of the creatures? Well, I think it is a combination of all three. At some point, I think the engineers were in conflict with the Drakati over control of certain regions and worlds throughout the galaxy. After a lengthy war, I think both sides were heavily diminished and with the only like a splinter group left of each. If LV-178 was the Drakati's homeworld, then they may have retreated there and pulled their resources in an attempt to begin to uh, essentially pack up shop and move to another galaxy not populated by their engineer enemies. Now, in the process of leaving the world, I think that they were attacked by maybe an engineer vessel in the same derelict ship that we see in the mines of LV-178. The ship is said to be massive, exceeding the size well and truly of the derelict on LV-1. 426, meaning it could have very well been a colony ship bound for a new galaxy. However, as stated, in the process of leaving they were attacked by a group of engineers in their own warships. The engineers were able to, at the very least, take down one of the ships, hitting it with some kind of unknown projectile uh, energy based weapon. As the derelict vessel on LV-178 is shown to have extensive battle damage suffered to it. This caused the ship to crash back to the surface of the world and unleashing their cargo of xenomorphs, overmorphs and facehuggers it held in its nursery area. At some point after the ship crashed, 
back to the planet, an enormous wall-like structure was connect, uh, constructed between the city and the ship. This was presumably to keep the xenomorphs over running their civilization. These xenomorphs, however, were able to successfully wipe out the entire population of LV-178 until a queen was produced, laid a contingency of eggs, and the infant station went into hibernation, awaiting a possible collection of new hosts to one day arrive. While their civilization fell, it is still possible a few ships escaped and left to a more unknown region of our galaxy or possibly even a new one in order to escape their war with the engineers. But currently, this is still hard to determine uh, whether it's true or not. Nevertheless, though I... Nevertheless, though, what remained of their civilization was quickly covered over, buried, and cemented in thick sand, gravel, dirt, and stone. Due to the harsh climate and weather on the surface of this deserted planet, LV-178 quickly swallowed the civilization, burying it and fossilizing it. And within only a few thousand years, it was like there was nothing there at all. This outcome is one of many possible ones and is just my own personal opinion. There is much room for speculation. The buried ship and city would eventually be rediscovered by human um, Triminite miners in uh, 2159. The miners and the crew of the Marion stumbled upon the derelict whilst carving out extensive mines. This ultimately led them to encountering a group of hibernating xenomorphs lying there dormant within the vessel. The creatures slaughtered all of the miners stationed on the surface, and soon after hitched a ride to the Marion within the frantic crew's escape pods. After this commotion, a small team comprising of surviving crew members and Ellen Ripley after her arrival on the Narcissus, went down to the surface into the mines uh, to recover fuel cells needed to escape from the star system. They found the derelict there and were quickly besieged by a wave of xenomorphs. The group set off charges within the ship in an attempt to destroy it and prevent the xenomorphs from spreading further off planet. Hundreds of years later, in 2496, the Drakati ruins on LV-178 were rediscovered by Weyland Yutani Corporation after Alan Decker, a low-level empath, detected the xenomorphs living below the surface. Both the ship and the city were then explored in greater depth by the company's research team sent in to investigate it. Predictably, the xenomorphs ended up overwhelming them and these humans uh, barely survived their encounter with the xenomorphs, leaving the ruins to once again be vacated and then orbitally bombarded. After this event, it is uncertain if the city or the derelict or the xenomorphs survived. Whilst they did survive the fuel explosion of 2159, it is unlikely that they survived the orbital bombardment by Weyland yutani in 2496. Weyland yutani presumably had access to much more devastating weaponry by that point, plus they had already obtained a xenomorph specimen and had no need for anyone else to find another one ever again. Last of all, I would like to mention a fan theory that the Drukati may have visited Earth in the past, leading to the inspiration of many Eastern civilizations like their idol-like gods. Specifically, the Drukati's appearance can be linked to the Egyptian god Anubis. May this have been what started their conflict with the engineers, with them trying to insert themselves as gods on Earth, whilst the engineers attempted to do the very same? attacking their egos and leading to a holy war of sorts. But again, this is just speculation. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content. The monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.